Mark Thompson was out with his girlfriend Jenny Allison. They were hanging out with their friends, taking advantage of their last weekend of freedom before school started back. They would all be entering their senior year. They would all be the kings and queens of the school. They had spent the night discussing how great it was going to be as the top dogs. After three years of working their way up the ladder from freshmen, fresh meat, next week they would finally be at the top of the food chain. And as one of the stars of the football and basketball teams, Mark was one of the top of their clique. They were out on his family farm, on the back of the property, holding a bonfire slash keg party. As the party was winding down, Mark peered out at his friends. At six foot three inches tall, he was able to look over most of the group. And he smiled, especially as he saw Jenny coming his way. At five foot three, Jenny was just right in his eyes, she has such a small, but nicely curvy body, she was a good combination of southern girl sassy and sweet. With her big, expressive crystal blue eyes and long, thick, wavy blonde hair she was incredibly beautiful. Mark loved her curvy little body, she was just about the best-looking girl he'd ever seen. He had pursued her for the better part of two years and finally just three weeks ago he had finally hooked up with her. They had gotten together after the group had spent the day at Miller's Landing. It had been a great day, swimming, skiing and tubing, not to mention the girls showing off their incredible forms in their bikinis. And none were better looking than Jenny. After the party had ended and the cleanup had been completed, they moved to Mark's favorite part of the evening's activities, his time alone with his girl. They were having a great time until their all-too-common discussion popped up again. Mark remaced as he realized he had made his all-too-common mistake when he grabbed Jenny and set her on the tailgate of his of his truck. Mark, stop it. I can get up here just fine, thank you. I'm not some dainty little girl who can't get up on the truck. I've told you I can do this all by myself. Mark grinned sheepishly as Jenny ranted. I'm sorry, babe. I was just trying to be helpful. I wasn't trying to do anything that meant you couldn't do it. My daddy taught me to always help a lady and that was all I was trying to do. And Jenny just shook her head. She had battled these chauvinistic attitudes all her life. As a matter of fact, that was why she had resisted Mark's advances for so long. He's one of those good old southern boys, with the entrenched mindset that a guy has to do for a lady. Like a girl can't do for herself. She knew it wasn't that he was an all-out chauvinistic pig, he really just didn't know any better. It really wasn't his fault, his daddy had trained him to be that way. This mindset was why she had plans to leave town about five minutes after graduation. She planned to move to LA, a place where life would be so much better. She wouldn't have to deal with the small-town attitudes. However, for the next nine months she would have to just deal. And Mark was really cute, and he did try. But, he just didn't understand, being so tall at 6'3 he never had to deal with the issues of being short, not to mention that of being a girl. Glaring at him, aggravated she finally said, you would feel different if you were a girl, a short girl, like me. As Jenny finished her rant he suddenly felt really weird. He closed his eyes and as he grabbed the tailgate to steady himself and the weird sensation increased. He felt a strange itchiness all over and he felt like he was getting weaker and softer as the strange feeling increased. Looking back to Jenny, he was amazed, she was now over his head and getting higher and higher. And almost immediately after finishing her outburst, Jenny saw Mark shudder. Then she noticed he looked different, like, like he was getting smaller and somehow softer. Sliding off the truck she landed in front of her boyfriend and after writing herself, she looked up at him. It wasn't that looking up was weird, what was weird was she wasn't looking as far up to Mark. And then she noticed the difference in their respective heights was lessening with each passing second. When Jenny dropped off the truck and then straightened up in front of him, Mark paled as she continued to get taller and taller. They just stared into each other's eyes, as Jenny continued to grow. After a couple of minutes Jenny was as tall as him. And then even worse she continued to grow taller, finally stopping when she seemed three or four inches taller than him. Oh my god! Mark blurted as he looked up into his previously short girlfriend's eyes. She had to be nearly six and a half feet tall now. And when Mark's height finally stopped dwindling he looked to be a couple of inches shorter than her. 
she'd be surprised if he was over five feet tall now, as he looked like a little kid in his daddy's clothes they were so big on him. Jenny stared in utter disbelief at the now very short mark. Then her eyes shot wide as more changes began. The strong, chiseled jaw began to melt away and his nose began to shrink as well. Then his eyes, though they shrank some, almost seemed bigger as his overall head had shrank too. Then, his buzz-cut dark hair began to grow and in little more than a minute Mark had long, thick chestnut brown hair hanging down to his mid-back. Then, she heard him groan as he looked down. Her gaze followed his to the ground, but she couldn't see anything beneath all the clothes that swallowed Mark. Looking back up she thought he looked a little shorter now. Hearing him groan again, she noticed his voice seemed softer and, and higher. Looking back down and she thought she noticed his pants getting tight around his hips. Then shifting her gaze higher, she thought it looked like his shirt became even baggier on him. That is until she noticed his chest, where there seemed to be something growing, something swelling there. And then she realized as crazy as all of this was, in addition to Mark's dramatic shrinking, he also, impossibly appeared to be turning into a girl. Looking higher, she noticed his shoulders narrowing and his arms became significantly thinner and shorter. Then, his throat slimmed as his Adam's apple seemed to melt away. Finally, after who knows how long she looked into Mark's feminized face. And Jenny smiled as she realized she was looking down to this, short, feminized version of her boyfriend. Mark was in complete shock as the dramatic changes occurred to them. Jenny now looked to be at least three inches taller than him, maybe even four inches. But that wasn't what disturbed him the most. It felt like he was changing too, getting softer somehow. Then, when he felt something at his feet he looked down. It felt like his feet were getting smaller. However, he couldn't see really well because long dark hair fell in front of his face. Then, even though he was feeling smaller all over, it felt like his hips and ass were getting bigger. And he groaned as his pants squeezed him as his butt swelled. Then, he felt something in his groin and fearfully he felt like his cock was shrinking and then, ugh. It felt like his cock and balls were sucked up into him. At that he got really scared as he realized that meant he. He was a girl now. And as he stared at his groin he realized that more and more his sight of his midsection was being blocked by something. And slowly it occurred to him that he was growing tits. Finally, the weird feelings went away and fighting freaking out, Mark looked up into his now tall girlfriend's eyes. Oh, my god! He blurted, and he was shocked by the high-pitched soft sound of his voice. His hands flew to his mouth and he stabbed himself with his much longer fingernails which then caused him to look at his now small, delicate-looking hands, each finger tipped with long fingernails that were painted pink. Oh, my God! He blurted again. And Jenny was amazed at the small cute girl standing where her boyfriend had stood just minutes before. Then, her eyes caught something moving down below and looking down, she saw Mark's clothes begin to morph. First his jeans began to draw up, getting shorter and shorter. As the bottoms of his jeans shortened, a pair of small, pink cowgirl boots with about a two-inch heel came into view. Looking up Jenny was amazed as the pants continued to shorten, when they were done they had become extremely short little cut-off jean shorts that fit Mark like a glove, showing he now had short, but nicely toned legs and rounded hips and a full ass. Then, continuing his plaid shirt, shrunk as well, and turned into a soft pink and powder blue plaid shirt. It fit him snugly as well, displaying a nice pair of probably C-cup boobs. That probably looked bigger due to how small he was now. Mark was nearly in shock at the changes, however it got worse when his clothes changed. Now they both could see his dramatically altered body. His legs looked like legs he would like to see on any girl, so toned and fit. He was distressed when his pants quit changing, now they were so short he felt like his ass was hanging out the bottom of them. Reaching around he blushed as he indeed could feel the bottoms of his much bigger ass cheeks at the bottoms of the back of the jean shorts he was now wearing. And he was further dismayed as he felt air moving across his somewhat exposed ass cheeks and quite obviously exposed legs. But even worse was that he could feel the shorts pulling up snugly between his legs, displaying the absence of his dick and balls. And as bad as that was, then he felt his t-shirt begin to change and before he knew he felt it, what had to be a bra holding his. 
holding his. He almost couldn't even say it, even to himself. But, eventually he thought the bra was holding his. Tits. Looking back up to Jenny, he squeaked again. Oh, my God. What happened to us? And smiling Jenny was finally brought out of stunned amazement when in a high, feminized voice Mark broke her train of thought. She was in utter amazement to be able to look down to this really cute little girly version of Mark. Well, I'm not sure what you mean. My little Marky, I mean nothing has happened to me, it was all you. All the changes occurred to you. Mark was confused. What do you mean only to me? You have to be like six and a half feet tall now, he said tentatively as he looked up to his girlfriend. And Jenny's smile growing even bigger as she recognized that Mark had not realized he had shrunk in addition to his. Um, her gender change. But, then she thought well that would be cool, to be like six and a half feet tall. However, for right now she was just enjoying seeing Mark as this tiny cute girl. Oh, sweetie, I haven't changed, I didn't grow. It was all you babe. You have shrunk. She said as she continued to smile at her befuddled, feminized boyfriend. No way. Mark was stunned, he had been so focused on being changed into a girl, he had not realized he had also shrunk. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He blurted over and over again. It was then that he noticed how big his truck was, looking past Jenny, he saw that his Ford F-250 was a lot bigger than it had been just a few minutes ago. Then he gasped as he saw his truck begin to shrink. And in a matter of a couple of minutes his four-wheel drive, camouflage green, Ford F-250 morphed into a bright yellow Toyota Tacoma, with a sign in the back window saying, Country Girls Rock. Mark's eyes grew even bigger as he watched his pride and joy become a little girly truck. Moving to the side he saw the seats had pink camo seat covers on them. Worst of all this little truck was taller than he was now, he was continuing to be stunned by all that was happening. Then he remembered what Jenny had said. It was him who shrunk. Turning back to Jenny he paled as he looked up to her, realizing the truth of her statement. And when Mark gasped as he, um she looked past her, Jenny also turned and was stunned as she watched Mark's big four-wheel drive hunting truck shrink down and turn into the sunflower yellow cutesy little truck. Complete with a sign in the back window saying country girls rock. Turning back to Mark she saw her walk around the much smaller truck. Jenny smiled as she saw that Mark was shorter than this even smaller truck. When she turned back to her, Jenny just continued to smile. Finally coming out of his horrified state, he again squeaked. Oh my god! If, if you, you didn't grow? That means, means, I, I shrank. As he continued to look, up, to his now taller girlfriend. Then continuing, he stammered, if I, if you didn't grow? If I shrank, I, I must be, um, be, like, like five feet tall now? He said as he paled. And smiling as she saw the realization of what had occurred to her little Marky, Jenny said, well, honey, I'm pretty sure you're south of five feet, considering you're only just above my eye line now, add to that you're wearing what appears to be like two-inch heels. His eyes shooting down at Jenny's statement, Mark confirmed that he was wearing boots and even with the addition of the heels he had not realized he was wearing, he felt like Jenny had two or three inches on him. And he paled at that realization, looking up he realized that indeed he had to be below five feet tall now. Jenny's only five three and even with what appears to be two inch heels he is still looking up two or three inches. That made him realize he was maybe only four foot ten now. Oh, my god! If he was only four feet ten inches now that meant he was down nearly a foot and a half from what he should be. At that he blanched. How? How did this? This happen? I mean. People. People don't just shrink, guys don't just become girls. Change me back. Oh sweetie, what makes you think I did this to you? I don't know what did this to you. Jenny replied. Although she remembered making the comment about her realizing what it would be like to be a short girl. And from all the changes Mark was definitely a short girl now. Jenny was going to enjoy this, she had never had a friend that was shorter than her. 
At 5'3", she was tied as one of the three shortest girls at school, while well, not anymore. Now her little Marky would hold the title of the shortest kid at school. But you said something about me feeling different if I was a short girl. And then I changed. Changed into this short, little girly body. Change me back. I don't want to be a girl. I don't want to be short. How am I going to play football or basketball? I mean look at these little hands, they're so tiny and soft. I don't want to be a short girl. Besides you said a short girl like you. I'm even shorter. That's not fair. Mark cried. And Jenny just smiled as Mark ranted and then she grabbed her new little girlfriend and lifted her up onto the tailgate of the truck. Laughing as Mark squeaked in surprise, it was incredible to be able to lift her so easily. She had always felt like she was strong for her size and the way she just lifted Mark and easily placed her on the tailgate was incredible. Mark squealed when Jenny picked him up and set him on the tailgate, just like he had done to her only minutes before this insane thing happened to him. And he realized that he had to be really little for Jenny to be able to lift him like that. Looking down from where he sat, he was amazed at how far his feet dangled off the ground from the tailgate of this little truck. Looking back to Jenny, he paled when he saw the devious grin on her face. Oh, my God! Why did you do that? And chuckling, Jenny said, just trying to help a little lady out. Mark was dismayed to be manhandled that way, but even worse being called a little lady. I'm not a lady, not a little lady. He squeaked tentatively. And hearing Mark's nervous response, Jenny moved to stand in front of this cute little girl. Pushing her legs apart, Jenny smiled as she was still a little taller than Mark as she was sitting on the tailgate. With a gleam in her eyes as she looked down to Mark and said, Well, my little Marky, if you're not a lady, what are these? And she reached up and grabbed one of her boobs. And if you're not little, why is it that I, five foot three inch tall, Jenny, is looking down at you? And as she grinned deviously to her feminized boy, um, girlfriend, Jenny could tell she was ahead of Mark in figuring out what had occurred. She knew that Mark was most likely still in denial of what had happened to her. Mark was in complete disbelief, not only had he shrunk, but even worse he had become a girl. When Jenny grabbed his, his, boob, he squeaked in shock and batted her hand away. And looking up to the girlfriend that just minutes ago he had been a foot taller than, wasn't helping matters. Oh, my God. Don't do that. What are we gonna do? I mean, like no one's gonna know who I am. Wait a minute, Jenny said as she went over to the cab of the truck. After what had happened to the truck, she figured there would be something that would answer Mark's question. And found a purse that matched Mark's boots, digging inside she pulled out a billfold. Opening it up, she looked in amazement at the driver's license and in wonder blurted. Wow. Mark jumped down from the tailgate and was shocked at how far down he had to drop to reach the ground. Once he finally felt stable on his feet he followed Jenny to the cab of the truck and upon hearing her exclaim, she reached out and grabbed the wallet out of her hands. She too was stunned at what she was seeing. The driver's license showed a cute, brunette girl named Marcy Taylor Thompson and the statistics showed that she was 4 foot 10 inches tall and 90 pounds. The birthday was the same as hers, July 23rd, but a year later, meaning the girl shown on the driver's license was only 17 years old. Quickly moving to the mirror, Mark was distressed to see that her altered face matched the one shown on the license. She was also a year younger, she was now going to be a junior instead of a senior and even worse a high school girl, paling as she turned back to Jenny and then even more when she saw the big grin on her face. Oh, my God. We have to make it go back. You have to change me back. I don't want to be a girl. Change me back. Now. She screeched. And Jenny was loving this. Oh, sweetie, I didn't do this to you. I don't know how it happened, so I have no idea how to change you back. And more and more she didn't want him, um, her to change back. But, you were the one who said that I would feel different if I was a little girl. And I changed. And looking over at her modified truck, she continued. Everything changed. 
So just say you want me to change back and I should. Marcy was hoping against hope that it would work that way. And Jenny really didn't want Marcy to change back, she was really liking the way the new little girl looked. However, she did feel a little guilty, so hesitantly and with a total lack of conviction she said, you should change back to your old self, and she watched little Marcy like a hawk. After a few minutes and no changes occurred she had to fight to repress a big grin. Marcy was straining and she closed her eyes as she focused on her body, hoping to feel something similar to what happened when she shrunk and became a girl. However, after a couple minutes she did not feel anything. She still felt small, she still felt the boobs on her chest and worse the lack of anything between her legs. Reopening her eyes, she was dismayed to also still be looking up into Jenny's eyes. Shifting her gaze down to look straight ahead, she was distressed to realize her eyeline was level with Jenny's chin. Thinking about the impossible thing that just occurred to Marcy, after she voiced her opinion, Jenny thought, well it won't hurt to try. So, with as much sincerity as she could muster, said, I will be better if I'm taller. Closing her eyes, she waited and sure enough after a minute she felt something weird sweeping over her. Opening her eyes, she looked over to Marcy and was amazed to see her getting shorter. Glancing to the truck she was further surprised as it too got smaller. As she grew she felt her clothes draw up tight on her. However, like Marcy clothes did, when Jenny quit growing then her clothes morphed to fit her expanded form. Looking down to the seemingly even smaller Marcy, Jenny developed the biggest grin on her face. Looking all around she was amazed to be seeing things from such a high perspective. When Jenny said that about getting taller, Marcy flinched. Then watching her and nothing. And then, oh god! And Marcy paled as Jenny this time did grow. Stepping back, Marcy watched her girlfriend get taller and taller. When Jenny finally stopped growing, then a stunned Marcy watched as Jenny's clothes grew to fit her even taller frame. Oh my god! Why did you do that? That's not fair, why did it work for you and not for me? Marcy said as she took another step back from her now towering girlfriend. When her height stabilized and then her clothes adjusted to her new size Jenny laughed. She was amazed to be so tall, then she heard a noise and she turned toward the truck. And yet one more time she watched the truck morph. When it was done the truck had changed into a Ford F-150, it was a cherry red four-wheel drive with the same country girl's rock sign in the rear window. Walking over to the door, she opened the door and retrieved her leather purse. Pulling out and opening the billfold she was elated to see that she was now 5 foot 10 inches tall now. Turning back to Marcy she smiled. Well I guess we'll both get to see life the same way we each used to. Now you get to be the short one and I'll get to be the tall one. Now instead of you being a foot taller than me, I'm a foot taller than you. Isn't that cool? Chapter 2 Arriving Home, Marcy was still in a daze trying to adapt to this crazy new reality. Sitting in the passenger seat as Jenny drove her big cherry red F-150, she paled as she continued to look around. She felt so incredibly small, and seeing her short shapely legs extending out over the edge of the seat. She was dismayed at the fact her feet did not reach the floor. And the feeling of boobs bouncing on her chest as they drove down the dirt road did not help in the least. Especially, with the seatbelt running between them. When Jenny pulled into her driveway, she was further dismayed to see the bright yellow Toyota Tacoma they had seen earlier in her regular parking place. And Jenny had a huge grin on her face the entire drive back to Marcy's house. Experiencing life as a tall woman was more than incredible. She continued to sneak sidelong glances at Marcy and could tell she was not happy about their transformations. Jenny had always hated being so short, so seeing the world from seven inches taller was going to be unbelievable. She shook her head at knowing she was now five foot ten inches tall, that was awesome. It was going to be great seeing her friends as one of the tallest girls in school, rather than being the shortest. Oh wow, then she realized she was actually the tallest girl at school and she gasped. Hearing Jenny gasp, Marcy looked over at her. What? she asked nervously. Knowing it would not be something Marcy would want to hear, especially since she was now the shortest. The shortest by a good bit. Anyway, tentatively, she softly said, well, I just realized that at 5 feet 10 inches I am now the tallest girl in school. 
with a bit of a sheepish grin on her face. Marcy paled at hearing that. Um, what? She thought about that fact. She was one of the tallest guys in school in her real body. But, in this little girly body she thought she might be one of the shortest now. God, that's not fair. I'm supposed to be the tallest, not one of the shortest. This isn't fair. She whined in her new squeaky voice. Still feeling a bit bad about all of this, Jenny said, Honey, I hate to tell you this, but you're definitely the shortest in school now. I was tied with Becky Lynn Johnson and Delaney Riles at 5 feet 3 inches. And according to your driver's license you are now south of 5 feet tall. But, I have to tell you, you are a whole lot prettier than either of them, she said with a soft smile. As a matter of fact, you might be the prettiest girl at school. At hearing that she was now the shortest, Marcy was further discouraged. How in the world was she gonna make it as such a little girl? She was on the verge of tears as she looked. Up. At Jenny. She was even more upset that she was so close to crying. She had not cried since she was a little boy. Seeing Marcy about to cry, Jenny reached out and took her in her arms to comfort her. And as soon as she did, Marcy lost control and began bawling almost uncontrollably. Jenny just held her small girlfriend, running her hands over her back. After a few minutes Marcy started to calm and Jenny pushed her back by her shoulders. Seeing the distraught look on her face, Jenny was just a bit troubled herself. At this she leaned down and kissed her. She was a bit surprised with herself as she had never kissed a girl before. Nevertheless, she found she really liked kissing Marcy's soft lips. Marcy finally got control of herself and pulled out of Jenny's embrace. It had felt so nice when Jenny had run her hands up and down her back. She was shocked when Jenny leaned down and kissed her. She had always loved kissing Jenny, but that was different. That was when she was in her real body and Jenny was in hers. Now being a girl, a really little girl, she was unsure how she felt to kiss another. Girl. So, with mixed emotions she pulled back in nervously, she said, Uh, thanks for giving me a ride home. I. I'll talk to you tomorrow. And she turned and slid out of Jenny's high riding pickup. Once she straightened up she turned and paled as she looked up to Jenny as she closed the door. Jenny was disappointed when Marcy pulled away and then got out of her truck. She watched Marcy walk up to the front door. She could see her pause before going in. She imagined she was scared to go inside. Jenny knew her parents, and the rest of the world, would probably expect to see Marcy, not Mark, walk through the door. But, she was sure the diminutive Marcy was scared to see someone else as a girl, not as a guy. Anyway, once Marcy stepped inside, Jenny backed out of the driveway and pointed. Her pickup toward her house. As she drove, she reveled at the upgrades she had achieved. Gaining seven inches of height was just incredible. She was gonna love being a tall girl, rather than the little girl she had been all her life. Then this pickup, it was an almost brand new Ford F-150, so much better than the eight-year-old Camry she had before. As she drove she was almost to her neighborhood and realized she wasn't ready to go home. So, she flew past her turn, heading toward town. Marcy nervously made her way toward her house. As she walked up the driveway, she walked by what was apparently her new truck. She couldn't believe this was truck was parked here, it appeared to be the same truck that had momentarily appeared in place of her real truck. She saw it still had the same country girl's rock in the rear window. Then glancing in the cab, she saw the same pink camo seat cover inside. She was still amazed at what she was seeing as well as feeling as her breasts shifted on her chest when she leaned toward the truck. After a few minutes, she turned and apprehensively made her way up the steps of the front porch. What would her parents think when she walked through the door? How would she convince them she was really their son, who had been changed into this small girly body? As she approached the door, she reached into her pockets to get the keys, only to realize that these incredibly tight-fitting jean shorts didn't have room to carry anything in. At that she remembered her keys would be in. Her. Purse. So, pulling the pink leather purse in front of her, that she was reminded matched her boots, and dug through it to get her keys. 
Then nervously, she unlocked the door and stepped inside, bracing herself to try to convince her parents that she was indeed Mark. But, as she stepped inside Maddie walked by and he nodded at her and kept walking as he headed upstairs. She paled that he didn't seem to miss a beat. Trying to slip by and up to her room, she was stopped at hearing Daddy. About time you got home, Munchkin. Matthew Thompson called to his daughter. Matt, leave the girl alone. She's home in plenty of time. Honey, did you guys have a good time at the bonfire? Elizabeth Thompson asked. Marcy froze when her parents acted like it was the most normal thing in the world for her to be a girl. Elizabeth looked up to see her little girl looking like a deer in headlights. Honey, what's the matter? Are you okay? And she rose and moved over to Marcy. She couldn't believe it. Her parents didn't see anything wrong. When Mama rose and came over to her, Marcy paled as her short mother now stood taller than her. Mom was the same height Jenny used to be at 5 feet 3 inches and now she was shorter than Mama. She couldn't believe she was looking up to her mother. Up nearly half a foot according to her new driver's license. Concerned, Elizabeth walked up to Marcy. Honey, are you okay? Marcy couldn't believe this was happening, but she felt a little reassured that she didn't have to convince Mama and Daddy who she was. Uh, yeah, um yes ma'am, she said softly. Still not sure, but taking her at her word, Elizabeth hugged her little girl. Then stepping back, well, honey you should go take a bath, you smell like that bonfire. When Mama hugged her, Marcy had to fight losing control. She had not cried since she was a little kid. But, it felt so comforting for Mama to hug her. Thankful for a reason to escape, once Mama said she should take a bath, she agreed and turned to head upstairs. But, as she turned, Daddy called to her. You gonna just go to bed without giving me a goodnight kiss, munchkin? Matt said teasing his daughter. He, too noticed she looked like something was upsetting her as she nervously moved over to him. She was about to escape to her room when Daddy asked for a goodnight kiss. Not knowing what else to do, she tentatively made her way over to Daddy. And once there she leaned over and kissed him on the cheek. Then softly, she said, Good night, Daddy. Good night, baby girl. He watched her as she walked quickly out of the room. Once she turned the corner, he looked to Elizabeth. Hearing Marcy close her bedroom door, he asked, What's up with her? Elizabeth shook her head. Maybe something happened at the party. I'm sure she'll let us know. She's usually an open book. I'll talk with her tomorrow. Well, talk to her about those shorts she's wearing. When you do, they're too short to my way of thinking. Bringing up a recurring subject he figured he'd lost before, but still stuck in his craw. After kissing Daddy, Marcy moved quickly out of the living room and once to the stairs, she ran up and into her room. Once inside, she closed the door and leaned against it as she considered what just happened. Mama and Daddy didn't see anything wrong with her being a girl. And even worse, Daddy called her munchkin and baby girl like it was the most natural thing in the world. Looking around her room, she was further dismayed to see her room had also undergone a dramatic change. Gone were her football trophies, her basketball trophies, her stuffed deer head, her gun cabinet. Now her room had shelves with pictures of her family, her friends from school, cheerleading pom-poms, cheerleading and gymnastics trophies. The walls were painted a cherry blossom pink, then she paled at even knowing what that color was. Her dresser was a Catalina mirror dresser in antique white. Again, shaking her head that she knew that detail. And it was so different than the banged-up wooden dresser that it has replaced. And that doesn't include the fact it is covered with trays of makeup and brushes and other junk she had seen in her former girlfriend's rooms. Tentatively, pulling out the drawer in front of her, she sees wads of panties of numerous variety like boy shorts, bikini, French cut, hipster, thong, g-string and classic, plus others stuffed into the drawer. Not to mention knowing she has nearly 20 different shades of colors of panties, and again she is dismayed to realize she even knows those details. Hell, to know she could name 12 different shades of pink and 9 different shades of purple was crazy. And suddenly royal purple, pearly purple, mauve, light purple, amethyst, dark purple rolled through her mind. 
Then, looking in the next drawer she saw numerous bras also in different shades of colors. And the colors cherry blossom, flamingo, rose, orchid pink, blush, hot pink and baby pink played through her mind. And she realized she had a quarter cup shelf bras, a push-ups, three quarter cup, soft cup, demi cup, triangle and you plunge bras. Her head still spinning as all of these facts swirled through her mind. As she held one of the bras she noticed her nails and the cute pink polish and she instantly recognized it as julep birthstone nail polish from Ulta Beauty. Then shifted her attention over and she saw a tray with what she knew was 14 bottles of different shades of nail polish. And she shook her head at knowing all those styles and shades of lingerie or nail polish, not to mention the numerous types of makeup and perfumes. She turned from her dresser and looked around the room seeing everything else was different as well. Instead of a masculine pigsty, it was a messy room with feminine clothes and odds and ends strewn all over the place. And all of it was feminine stuff, like cheerleading gear, stuffed animals, hooks with scarfs and purses. Also, she realized she smelled a sweet, rose-flavored scent and she saw a bowl with potpourri on bedside table. The bed was a four-poster canopy queen bed with a rose-pink floral spread with another assortment of stuffed animals. And all of it so utterly feminine. Moving over to the mirror mounted on her door, which she realized was also new, anyway she slid in front of it to face what Jenny's. Um, whatever had done to her. She paled at seeing her. New reflection. If the girl in the mirror wasn't her, she would have lusted over her. Prior to this crazy situation, she had always loved girls with small, tight bodies and she now had a body that she would have lusted over for sure. But, she wasn't supposed to be a girl, and in reality, a really little girl. And even worse, looking around the room, apparently a cheerleader. Closing her eyes, trying to get a handle on what she was gonna do about this. Thinking about how she was gonna deal with being a little girl, she thought about playing football and basketball. And she was troubled when she started to realize she couldn't remember the details about either game. She played both games for over 10 years, not to mention baseball, but now she couldn't remember the rules and details of how to play those games. Focusing on the football practices Mark had been going to for the last several weeks as the team prepared for the season and instead of actual football practices, all she could remember was going to cheer practice and seeing her former teammates practicing on the other field. Now when she thought about going to practice, instead of football practices, she remembered jumping and tumbling and doing flips and somersaults while at her cheer practices. She remembered the strenuous exercises the squad did, she smiled at knowing she was the most flexible on the team. And weirdly, she felt a bit of pride at how well she did practicing with the squad. She felt an exhilaration that she was able to practice with the varsity squad, she was so excited that she had made it to the varsity squad for this year. One thing she did realize was so different was how the squad and coach Johnson encouraged her and the other girls as they went through their drills. That was so different than Coach Miller and Coach Barnes, they would curse and yell as they practiced, especially if you messed up. Her head was swimming as all of the conflicting thoughts rolled through her mind. Thinking back over the last several weeks, pretty much all she could remember was hanging out with her girlfriends or the other girls on the squad. She remembered her and the other girls watching the guys running through their drills. She remembers being impressed at how fast they can run, how high they jumped, how strong they seemed. And she paled at realizing she would no longer be one of those really fast or strong guys. She now has memories of Tony Mitchell speeding down the field. Man, he's fast she thought. Not to mention how cute he is. And she shivers at that thought. But, shaking her head as she knew she shouldn't be thinking that way. Then shifting to thinking about basketball, all she could think of was how incredibly tall the guys were and how they were able to bounce the ball so well. And how they would throw the ball at the basket and try to make it go through. Also, some of the guys could jump really high, all the way up to the basket and throw the ball into it really hard. Thinking about basketball, again she was disheartened that she couldn't remember playing the game. She remembers watching Tony and Charlie and even Maddie and how high they could jump. 
or how they could throw the ball from a long ways away and make it go through the basket. Closing her eyes and trying to remember playing basketball, all she could remember was how incredibly high the basket was and how heavy the ball was. She remembers goofing around one time and throwing the ball toward the basket, but the ball fell several feet short. Then, Kyle Martin handed her a ball, grabbed her by the waist and boosted her up to the basket. Then she lifted the ball and dropped it in the basket and everyone hooted and hollered. And almost on reflex, she grabbed the rim, then Kyle let go of her and she squealed girlishly as she hung so incredibly high. Looking down she couldn't believe how far it was to the ground. Finally, after begging for Kyle to help her, he grabbed her by the waist and lowered her to the floor. Embarrassed as she looked up to the incredibly tall Kyle. She learned later that he is six foot nine, nearly two feet taller than she was now. Thinking about looking up to Kyle she grew nervous, looking straight ahead, she realized she was only a little taller than his belly button. She knew she used to play on the team with him as Mark, but now she remembers bouncing the ball and she was so clumsy. She bounced the ball with both hands awkwardly and then bounced the ball off her feet and it bounced away. She growled at that memory and was frustrated that her growl came out sounding like a mouse squeaking. Shifting her thoughts from sports, she then has flashes of memories of going to Miller's landing down at the river with a bunch of the guys and girls from school and laying out in a bikini. And she paled at the memory, recognizing that was the weekend she, or rather, Mark had hooked up with Jenny. She remembers putting on the bikini and how excited she was to get to wear her new skimpy swimsuit. She can remember posing in front of the mirror, checking herself out from all angles and how thrilled she was at the thought of the guys seeing her in it, especially Tony. And even worse she remembers feeling some insecurity thinking Tony may not think she's pretty. Then it all fast forwarded and she was riding with Jenny to the river, wearing her tight jean shorts, a little tank top and flip flops, gossiping about all their friends. She remembers peeling her shorts off and then her tank top and thrilling at catching Tony watching her. Then she remembers watching who she realizes now are her old buddies, cutting up as they swung on the rope swing, playing catch with the football as they dove in the water. She knew they were just showing off for her and the other girls. She remembers her and the other girls gossiping and laughing at the boys as they lay out on the beach sunning. Then she flashes to a memory of being on Tony's shoulders as they wrestled with Delaney and Randy Johnson. She remembers laughing and giggling as she pushed on Delaney, and then squealing as she fell off Tony's shoulders and plunged into the water and came up spluttering. Then squealing again when Tony grabbed her up and held her up out of the water. She remembers blushing and then feeling excited to be held in his arms. And she shuddered as she remembers thinking how cute she thought Tony was. Shaking her head at that disturbing memory, she had never thought of Tony as anything but one of her buddies. Tony played on the football team and was the he played, and she realized she couldn't remember what position Tony played. And then thinking about Mark playing football and she couldn't remember what position he played on the team. Focusing on the guys on the team, she could only think of one position that she could remember. She could only remember that Charlie McCaskill played quarterback and even worse, how cute she thought he was. And she shook at this, as memories of checking out his tush. Man, he has a cute butt, she thought. Smiling at that memory, then realizing what she was thinking. Refocusing on football, but, try as she may she couldn't remember any of the other positions on the team. She knew a lot of the guys on the team, but she couldn't remember what positions they played. Straining she remembered there were guys that scored touchdowns and the others who tried to stop the other team from scoring. She realized it was only because of some of the cheers the squad did that she even knew that. That there was a defense, that the other guys wanted to score. They wanted to score. Touchdowns. But, again thinking about the guys all she could think was some of them were really big, others were just really tall, like Tony. Then she almost giggled as she thought about Johnny Baker and that he played tight end, remembering how she and her friends joked about how a lot of the guys on the team had tight ends. And she blushed. However, she knew she should know what the positions were after having played with them for years. 
But, despite trying as hard as she could, Charlie being quarterback and Johnny playing tight end, whatever that was, were the only spots on the football team she could remember, much to her dismay. Then thinking about the cheer squad, she realized the positions were base, spotter and flyer, and she knew she was the flyer. She remembered being thrown up in the air, kicking out and then dropping into her teammates' arms. Also, she remembered being at the top of the pyramid, or being boosted up and balancing on one foot, the other stretched up over her head. All of that felt so natural, as did her memories of bouncing and being perky as they practiced and then even more being on the JV squad last year and jumping around in the midst of her teammates as they cheered at a game. She remembered doing flips, somersaults, cartwheels and numerous other stunts. And she felt some pride at remembering the other girls saying she was the best on the team at those stunts. Thinking about doing a standing backflip was crazy. To think that she could stand and flip back and land on her feet was, well, it's crazy. Well, not any crazier than her being a girl she realized, but it was crazy cool. Then she remembered how excited she was at making it on the varsity squad. Thinking of the squad, she thought about Delaney, Bobby, Sue, Betty, Jamie, Renee, and Tommy. Some of the girls on the squad and how pretty they all were, girls who she wanted to emulate cause they had been on the varsity team for two or three years. And at that she realized another change, she had always dreamed of being kinda like that really cute Tom Brady. Then again, she shuddered at the realization of thinking of Tom Brady as being cute. Trying to refocus on who she was dreaming of and singers like Casey Musgraves, Carrie Underwood and Ariana Grande or actresses Selena Gomez and Lucy Hale flowed through her mind. And she felt almost a brightness in her mind as she thought of the songs her favorite singers performed as she played the music videos over in her mind. Or how cute the clothes Ariana Grande or Selena Gomez wore. And how cool is Ariana Grande? and realizing how it was so cool she was almost the same size as Ariana, being almost as tall as her. Then flashes of the Olympic gymnasts like Simone Biles and Ali Reisman popped in her head and she thought about how cool they both were. So much so she remembered trying to do some of the stunts they did. She was so impressed with their grace and athleticism. She again shook her head as she tried to focus on football and try as she may all she could think of was how cool the cheerleaders were. Refocusing on her and her friends, as she thought about all of the times with them, she realized that in every situation she recalled, she was the smallest of everyone. As she pondered these things she finally shook her head and looked around her room, at this point she realized she was sitting in the big wicker rocker, holding a teddy bear. Slowly, she set the teddy bear to the side and picked up the iPad on the side table. Turning over this new tablet, or at least new to her, and seeing it waking up. Logging into the tablet, she opened Facebook and a mix of surprise and excitement washed over her. As she scrolled down the page she found more confirmation of the new life she would apparently lead. Looking at the pictures, she found numerous pictures of herself as the girl she was now. The first set of pictures that appeared to be just days ago of her from the other day, showing her with the cheer squad. In several of the group shots, she was in front of all the girls since she was by far the smallest. There were shots of the whole team, then a couple of her with just a few other girls that her new memories told were also new to the team. Then some with her and the other juniors on the squad. Others showed them clowning around, one showed her being held laying horizontal in the girl's hands, another with her carrying Christy Newsome piggyback. She realized that Christy was the tallest girl on the squad at 5 feet 9 inches. And then thinking about that picture, she remembered the strain of holding Christy on her back, shaking her head at that memory. Another shot showed her dangling between Christy and Tiffany Turner, who was only an inch shorter than Christy. The picture showed her with her arms over their shoulders as they stood on either side of her, her feet basically a foot off the ground. Scrolling further back showed more pictures of her, some from when they were at Miller's Landing. These confirmed her earlier memories of being at the river in a skimpy bikini, shaking her head as she considered how hot the girl in the pictures was. Then as she scrolled through more pictures she found her gaze lingering on Tony and Charlie and and suddenly she gasped at what she was thinking, quickly flipping her iPad over and shoving it back on the table. She slid out of the rocker and dropped to the floor. 
standing there for a minute, trying to clear her mind of those disturbing thoughts. After a few minutes she looked around, again realizing how short she was. So much so she knew she would need the little step stool that was next to her bed just get on it. Another radical difference and further proof of how extremely short she was now. Anyway again, catching a whiff of the bonfire smoke on her clothes. So, she moved over to her closet and nervously began to undress. Again, noticing herself in the mirror, she saw her clothes were very tight-fitting, but nonetheless began working her way out of first her top. The nearly form-fitting cute top hugged her boobs almost like a second skin. Once she had that off, she paled at the bra that was revealed, that was filled to capacity with her. Her. Boobs. She couldn't believe she had boobs on her chest and even more how big they seemed. Then, almost on autopilot, she reached to her back and almost expertly unclasped the bra and in a seemingly practiced move let it drop off of her refined shoulders. And at that she caught the bra in her small hands. Lifting this ultimate feminine garment, she looked at the strap and read the tag 32C. Looking back to the mirror, she felt like her boobs were bigger than a C cup. But, looking at her reflection and seeing how small she was overall she figured they just looked bigger on her small chest. Also, there was the fact that she wasn't supposed to have boobs in the first place. Tentatively, she brought her hands up to her boobs and she shivered at feeling the soft sensitive globes. She had always loved looking at boobs, but now, now to, to have a set, a set, of her own was, was, well it was crazy. But, as she continued to run her hands over her boobs, she realized it wasn't the worst thing to have a set of her own. And she shook her head at that thought. But, she then checked out the topless girl in the mirror, dressed in the tight-fitting shorts and boots, she began to feel something. Else. At that she played a bit in front of the mirror, turning to look at her profile, moving her arm across her chest, being a little flirty. As big as her boobs seemed, she almost wished they were a little bigger, as she did with her ass. Turning more and checking out her ass from over her shoulder, she shimmied it and liked what she saw. She did wish it was a bit more toned, like Carla Nichols was. She was a little jealous of Carla's ass, she knew all the guys loved looking at her but Then, she again realized what she was thinking and paled, shaking her head to rid her mind of those troubling thoughts. So, refocusing on the matter at hand, she moved on and unbuttoned the cute, tight shorts her jeans had morphed into. Again, like with her top, not realizing she thought of a piece of her clothing as cute. First, she leaned down and pulled off the little pink leather boots she was wearing. As she leaned down she felt her boobs jostle as they shifted on her chest. Man, that was weird. The feelings of boobs wobbling on her chest was was just crazy. Once out of her boots, she stood back up, again feeling her boobs bounce and then settle into place. Glancing back to the mirror she realized she was even shorter now without the two-inch boost her boots gave her. Looking at herself in the mirror, seeing herself at her actual new height of four feet ten inches, and she paled. It had been bad enough to be seeing the world at five feet tall, but to be even just two inches shorter made it even worse. However, she knew she couldn't do anything about that, so she began to work her way out of the tight-fitting shorts. And as she pushed the shorts down her legs, she also pushed down her panties too, which caused a brief panic to shoot through her. But, then she realized it was her ultimate goal to get out of all of her clothes to take a bath, so she let that one go. Anyway, she kicked her shorts and panties onto a pile of dirty clothes in the corner of her closet. Then she nervously turned and took in the full effects of whatever it was that Jenny's. Uh. She guessed it's a wish. Anyway, what Jenny's wish had done to her. Again, if she was still in her real body, she would have loved to get with the girl being reflected. But, to be her was. Well, she just couldn't put it into words. Seeing her. Boobs and her. Her pussy. She just stared at the empty place between her legs. It had a small, well-trimmed patch of auburn-colored hair that ended just above the slit that peeked out between her legs. Like a moth to a flame, her hand slowly made its way to this new configuration down there. 
she hesitantly reached down and traced a finger over her new, lower lips. And, like with her boobs, she was amazed, scared and pleased at the feelings that produced. Then she was startled when she heard someone coming down the hall and she scrambled back to the closet looking for something to put on. In a bit of a panic, she couldn't find anything, then looking back out to the room she saw a lavender-colored robe on the rocking chair in the corner and she scurried over to grab it. Not realizing she recognized the specific shade the robe was. Nevertheless, she threw on the cute, oversized, soft terry cloth robe and breathed a sigh of relief. And even more so when she heard Maddie walk on past her door. And again, she relaxed at that. Staring back at the mirror, she still couldn't believe what she was seeing. Then she noticed her cute robe was nearly dragging on the floor. She realized she looked even more darling in the lavender robe and she appreciated how it felt covering her soft form. She stretched her arms out and her fingertips just barely reached past the end of the sleeves. So, she clumsily pulled the sleeve on her right arm with her small left hand from inside the sleeve exposing a slim, seemingly muscle-less arm. Letting go of the sleeve it easily slid back down over her arm and hand. But for some reason smiles at how darling she looks in the extra-large robe. Anyway, she realized she was going to take a bath, so she looked around and appreciated that she had her own bathroom. Well, that is one small consolation she thought as she headed into it. She used to have to share the other bathroom with Maddie, which could be real aggravating. Once inside, she was assaulted with another messy, but extremely feminine room. There were all the tools she would need to get ready for her day. Blow dryer, brushes, combs, an assortment of creams and lotions and perfumes and numerous other items piled on top of each other. And disturbingly she recognized each item and knew exactly how she would use them. And the room was painted in a rose pink, with a wallpaper border that complemented the paint with roses and swirls. Looking into the big bathroom mirror over the counter she saw the beautiful girl she had become. Her hair was a lustrous auburn color, with streaks of golden highlights. It was thick, wavy and long, hanging down to her mid-back. And she felt a bit of pride at how good it looked. Nervously, she reached up and tucked it behind her ear in a seemingly practiced move. At that she saw some mid-sized golden hoop earrings and behind those were small diamond studs in a martini three-prong setting. And as she went to remove them, she paled at her understanding of jewelry settings. Setting the earrings in a small tray on the shelf to the side of the sink, she then removed the several rings she had not realized she was also wearing. Removing her robe and stretched up to hang on the hook, but before doing so on a lark she looked at the tag and was surprised to see it was a sized medium. She was further surprised, it had seemed so huge she had imagined it would be an extra large. Again, just one more confirmation of how small she was now. Anyway, after hanging the robe on the hook, which she had to stretch up just a bit to do, she moved over and turned on the faucet and added some oils and bubble bath, and then gathered up her hair into a bun to prevent it from getting wet, as she waited for the tub to fill. As it filled, she turned back to the mirror to see what Jenny's wish had done to her. Standing there naked, feeling the cool air swirl around her naked form, she shook her head. Then going up on her tiptoes, to get a better look she just paled. Dropping back onto her heels, she felt her new feminine curves bounce. Bouncing on her heels again, she felt her boobs bounce, so she did it again. Then she noticed her tushy bounce, and she bounced on her heels a couple of more times. It was crazy and cool to feel her feminine curves bouncing and jiggling. And she ran her hands over these new parts. Squeezing her tushy she loved the feel of these soft pliant globes that made up her backside now. Then she shook her head in dismay that she was enjoying feeling her new girly parts. So, turning and seeing the tub almost full she scurried over and shut off the faucet. Then she climbed in and sat down. Once in the tub she sat amongst the bubbles, appreciating how spacious the tub felt to her. Laying back, she marveled at how big the tub was to her now. As she relaxed into the warm, nicely scented water, she purred as she calmed down. Then she thought about all that she had done this evening, going from being the tall man she had been to the little girl she was now. Then realizing everything she had thought of and done since she got into her room. Comprehending she now recognized vast numbers of shades of colors and smells. 
She knew about multiple shades of pink, purple, green, blue and red. She could think of multiple types of earrings, rings and necklace settings. She could also recognize various scents of bath oils and perfumes. With Neutrogena Light Sesame being the brand she could afford to buy most often, but Molten Brown Rose Absolute Sumptuous Bathing Oils was her absolute favorite. But, it was a little too pricey to use on a regular basis. She knew there was a bottle of it in the cabinet under the sink, but she only used it on special occasions, like the winter formal or prom. As she soaked in the warm water, she glanced down and saw, and felt her breasts floating and swaying with the slight movement of the water. She shook her head at the craziness of the fact she even had breasts, as she felt the conflicting feelings and thoughts of Mark and Marcy battling for control. She was amazed that little Marcy was more and more proving stronger than Mark. When Mark's feelings and perceptions were strongest, she was scared as could be. To be so small and probably very weak. Was. Well, it's scary as hell. But, when Marcy took control, she felt absolutely normal and she so appreciated her life. Oh, she wouldn't mind being a little taller for sure. But, she loved her family, she loved all her friends, she loved being a cheerleader. She felt an excitement about being on the varsity squad this year and she really hoped Tony invites her to the formal. God, he is so cute. Then she realizes again what she is thinking, and she shivers despite the warm water. If there was any way she was gonna get back to being Mark, she was gonna have to fight these disturbingly girly feelings. At that she sat up and plucked the scrubby off the side of the tub and squirted some body wash onto it and bathed herself. Then she slid forward and unplugged the tub, paling at how far she had to stretch, and was dismayed when she had to lean into the mountain of bubbles to pull the plug, spluttering as she came up out of the bubbles. Rinsing away the bubbles, she stood and pulled a soft pink towel from the bar next to the tub and patted herself dry. Wrapping the towel around herself, she moved over to the sink and unpinned her hair, letting it cascade over her shoulders and down her back. Picking up a comb she combed out her auburn tresses until it shone its most lustrous. Then she pulled out her pill, knowing it was time to take it. Finally, she brushed her teeth and felt like she was ready for bed. Turning to leave, she noticed in the tub there was a chain link to the plug making her realize she could have avoided burying her face in the bubbles. And she paused again, one more time she realized that since she had stood to get out of the tub. Marcy had her on autopilot as she went through her nighttime routine. Glancing back to the mirror she saw her hair was up in a ponytail and she was wearing her lavender robe again. Once back in her bedroom, she moved over to the dresser and pulled out her favorite nightie and slipped it on and then did the same with a pair of panties. Once dressed for bed, she moved over and used the little steps tool to climb up on her bed. But, once there, she pulled up the covers, switched off the light and lay back. She did appreciate the plush, pillow-top mattress she had also, apparently, acquired in this new reality. She made up her mind she was gonna fight with everything in her to get her real life back, making mental notes of how and what she was gonna do to accomplish. Jenny got home close to midnight. She was on an unbelievable high when she finally came home. She had gone to hang out with some of the guys after the bonfire and man was it cool. She had to fight to repress her almost ever-present grin as she stood taller than every girl there and taller than a few of the guys. Guys that had been so much taller than she used to be. She got a couple of comments asking why she was being so weird. Standing close to the girls who used to be taller than her, looming above them was so cool. The closest to her now was Rachel Hood, who was 5 foot 8 and now 2 inches shorter than her. Then there was Nancy Fry and Annie Morgan, both of whom were 5 feet 6 inches. Nancy gave her a hard time about crowding her as she kept sliding up closer to her. Then there was Brandon Harvey and David Moore who were 5 feet 10 inches and 5 feet 11 inches respectfully. She loved being able to look them in the eye as they stood around in a circle as they talked about the coming school year. But also, Delaney and Becky Lynn were there, it was so weird to be looking down at them from her now 7 inch advantage. After looking both of them in the eye all her life it was so cool to now be so much taller than both of them. Giving Delaney a hug before they headed home, she had to repress a grin at towering over her former co-shortest and school friend. 
After an hour and a half of hanging out with her friends, Jenny said her goodbyes and headed home, reveling the whole way at being among the tallest of her friends. Once home and in her room she begins pouring through all of her new stuff. Everything she found had been altered to fit her new body. All of the photo albums and yearbooks she looked through showed her as the tall girl she was now. And even more, they showed Marcy as an uber-cute pixie of a girl. She giggled seeing Marcy as a cheerleader, or in a bikini, all done up as a cute little girly girl. Seeing pictures of her formerly macho man boyfriend all dolled up in her prom dress from last spring, or in her cheer outfit, or in a form-fitting top and short skirt made her laugh. And even more so seeing Marcy in the four and five inch heels obviously looking to gain the boost in height she had previously sought. Pouring through all the pictures of she and Marcy in various situations, and for her to be the one who now towered over her little girlfriend was just so cool. There were pictures of them in bikinis, dressed as they were after the change tonight in form-fitting tops and jean shorts. One that was really cool, at least to her way of thinking, showed her in her five-inch heels and Marcy in her cheerleader outfit and some tennis shoes. So, showing Marcy at her now diminutive height of four foot ten and her at Matt's old height of six foot three. She smiled as she saw Marcy was basically boob high to her in the picture. Then another where Marcy was wearing probably four inch heels and she was in some flat sandals and still Marcy was only a little taller than her shoulders. She leafed through page after page of the albums and yearbooks and was thrilled to see the numerous shots of her as the tallest girl in nearly every one of them. The only pictures she found with girls taller than her was from her ninth grade yearbook. But it was in those that she discovered pictures of her being as tall or sometimes taller than the boys in these shots. At that her mind swirled a bit as new memories flowed into her head, seeming to replace her original memories with memories of always being taller than average. Having been five foot three, she remembered being just below average as compared to her friends and classmates. Now though, her memories were always being among the tallest of her friends. She thrilled at memories of being the tallest kid in some of her elementary and middle school grades. Pulling out and flipping through some of her photo albums she found pictures from 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th and 6th grades where she was the tallest of all her classmates. She even saw she was as tall or even a little taller than Charlie McCaskill and Randy Johnson in the 6th grade, which was cool cause both of them were at least as tall as Mark used to be. Then a memory of being out, all dressed up, while wearing her 5-inch heels and being able to look Charlie and Randy in the eye. That was so cool! And as she thought back. On that time she smiled at the memories of being the tallest kid during those times. Then she remembers taking in the little Marcy as a friend in elementary school. She had seen some bigger kids, well bigger than Marcy that is, picking on her. She had stepped in to protect the little girl and their friendship grew from that time to now. Thinking over her memories of her times with Marcy, she was always considerably taller than her feminized former boyfriend and she laughed at that. Then she realized she was able to access memories of her in this new life and remembered. She reached five feet tall as a nine-year-old and reached her previous height of five-three at eleven. Then thinking about Marcy, she remembered meeting who she knows to be her former boyfriend and how incredibly small she was. In this new life she was nearly a foot and a half taller than Marcy when she met her when she was in the second and Minnie Marcy was in the first grade. She can remember teasing Minnie Marcy about how late she was reaching many height milestones. She was only just over three foot tall in the first grade, was twelve before she reached four feet tall and of course she has not and probably will not reach five feet tall. But she did appreciate seeing little Marcy dressed so cute in so many of the pictures. Marcy certainly had a flair for fashion, with cute tops, stylish jeans and accessories. Doing her hair and makeup expertly even added to the cute little lady she was now. But then thinking about clothes, she got even more excited with what she found in her closet. Her new clothes were for tall women and she smiled at how incredible her new wardrobe looked. There were so many long flowing dresses that would have drug on the ground if she tried them on a few hours ago. Now the longest of these hung down to mid-calf. And then the sizes were more in the large or tall ranges as opposed to the smalls and extra smalls her clothes had been before. 
After combing through her closet for a while, she moved over to her dresser. Opening a drawer at random, she found a collection of bras. Picking up the first one she looked at the tag and read 34C. Glancing down to her chest she smiled as she realized not only had she gained a considerable amount of height, she had also grown in breast size. Bringing her hands to her expanded chest she smiled again. Putting on the bra proved a little tight making her realize she was a very full C cup. Then picking up another bra she saw it was a 34D, and she smiled even more. Pulling her t-shirt back on, she was pleased to see it was filled to capacity, making the t-shirt seem almost a bit too small for her. Which elicited another giggle from her lips. Again, she played coquettishly in front of the mirror, first with the t-shirt on, then with just the bra and finally topless. And as she looked over her shoulder, she also appreciated her much fuller tush. Checking herself out from every possible angle showed she had acquired a much lusher form in addition to the vertical inches she had gained. As she was holding her private fashion show she found several pairs of heels she found in her closet. When she found the five-inch strappy sandals, she just had to model them. At that point, dressed only in a short tee and panties, she slipped into the shoes and then stood, marveling at her incredible new height. She realized that with the boost of the five-inch pumps she was seeing the world from just above six feet. Laughing as she appreciated that she was seeing the world from the same view Mark had before this incredible set of events occurred. She modeled in front of the mirror for the better part of 15 minutes. Spinning and strutting around in front of the looking glass, reveling in the fact that she was now standing a foot taller than she had been earlier in the day. All the while she was also pleased to see her model on legs that were toned and shapely. What was almost as amazing was how comfortable she was in her new near Amazonian proportions. She again giggled as she reveled in this incredible change in her life. She had often dreamed of being so much taller, but never thought it could ever happen. Finally done checking out her new stuff, she went to the bathroom and stripped to shower before going to bed. Once naked, she again appreciated her new form. Her long, lean body was so unlike the small, tight body she'd lived in until a few hours ago. Again, turning and checking herself out in the mirror she thrilled at what she was seeing. Feeling a little tired, she moved to the tub and started the shower. Once it was a good temperature, she stepped under the spray and smiled yet one more time at seeing how close to the shower head she now stood. She remembers she used to have to stand on the side of the tub to adjust it before. Well, not anymore as she giggled as she reached up and played with the shower head and laughing at this simple, trivial thing. After spending more than her regular time bathing her upgraded form, she ended that shower and finished up in the bathroom and headed to bed. Chapter 3 A New Day Suddenly, Marcy was awoken by a knock on her door. Marcy, honey, it's time to get up. You need to get a move on to get ready for church. Elizabeth knocked on her daughter's door as she entered to wake Marcy. Stretching, Marcy, groggily replied, yes ma'am. As she looked up to see Mama coming into her room, Elizabeth moved over to the side of her bed. She stretched over and brushed a lock of hair from her daughter's face. Sweetie, time to rise and shine, she said softly as she gazed at her. With a groggy smile, Marcy looks up to Mama. Baby girl, are you okay? You looked upset last night, Elizabeth asked. Yeah, I'm fine, Marcy replied still a little bleary-eyed. Still not sure, Elizabeth smiled and said. Well okay, well we better get moving, you know how daddy gets if we're late to church. As she turned and headed for the door. But, not before looking back one more time. Come on baby girl and seeing Marcy moving she pulled the door shut. As Mama closed the door Marcy threw back the covers as she slid to the side and then off the bed. Taking a second to regain her bearings, she then ambled into the bathroom and moved over to the toilet, pulled down her panties and sat to pee. As she did so, suddenly she remembers what happened last night and what she was doing now. Oh, my God! I'm really a girl. She gasped and looked down to see herself sitting on the toilet as she relieved herself was just one more sad confirmation of that fact. Again, she remembered all of her actions last night after she got home, her thoughts and memories when she got to her room. As she stood, she tried to focus on being Mark, but that was too hard. 
Also, from Mark's perspective, she knew she was supposed to wipe somehow and remembered hearing girls had to be a little more careful cause of their pussy. Then, Marcy took control and she expertly took care of business. Once done in the bathroom, Mark tried to retake control of things. She felt a rumble in her stomach and realized she needed something to eat, since it had been before she had been transformed since the last time she ate. Then giggling she thought, while she hadn't eaten anything, it was Mark who ate last. But, again she shook her head to fight off Marcy taking control. Anyway, after donning her robe, nervously she made her way out of her bedroom. As she was headed down the stairs, Maddie was heading up. Morning short stuff. Better get a move on or you're gonna be late for church again. And dad will be pissed. She paled as her much taller, younger brother moved on by. Maddie was two years behind her and a few inches shorter than she was, or than Mark was. He had just reached six feet tall, a point he was so proud of since he reached six feet earlier than Mark had. But, that meant he was over a foot taller than she was now. But, once her much bigger, little brother moved on by, she tentatively continued down the stairs and into the kitchen. Entering the kitchen, she saw Daddy sitting reading the paper as he ate breakfast and Mama drinking some coffee. Looking up to see his little girl entering the kitchen, Matthew felt a little better. Marcy had a bad tendency of making them late for church. Morning pumpkin, he said with a bit of a forced smile. Elizabeth too felt a little better, she didn't want Matthew to get riled up this morning. Their discussion about Marcy's wardrobe last night was still fresh in her mind. Men. They just don't understand, she thought. Dang, Marcy thought, she had hoped to be able to slip in and out of the kitchen without too much interaction with anyone. And as Mark took control, she nervously looked to her parents. Not to mention with Mark in control she wasn't sure what she should get for breakfast. She was scared to relinquish control to Marcy because the last time she did, she started having dreamy thoughts of Tony and going to the winter formal. Looking to Mama she softly replied, Good morning, I slept okay. And then moved over to the counter and poured herself a cup of coffee. Taking a sip, she grimaced as she realized that Marcy didn't drink her coffee black like Mark did. Then seeing the bottle of French vanilla creamer and added some as well as several scoops of sugar. Testing it, she ended up adding a fair amount more, before she got it to an acceptable taste for her new girly taste buds. Decide to have a little coffee with your cream and sugar? Matthew teased his little girl. And when did you start drinking coffee anyway? He continued. Freezing, Marcy hoped she didn't screw up. Um, I thought I'd give it a try, she said nervously. Then looking to Mama, she saw a confused look on her face too. Before, this went too far, she excused herself, saying she needed to get ready for church. Once around the corner she breathed a sigh of relief. Then hearing Mama and Daddy questioning each other about what they just saw scared her even more. Elizabeth turned to Matthew with a questioning look. When did she start drinking coffee? She asked. Something must have happened at the party, she's been squirrely since she got home. Matthew replied. If they only knew, Marcy thought. But, how would she be able to convince them, or anyone, she used to be Mark? It's like to the whole world she's always been Marcy. From her driver's license, to the way they acted last night and this morning, to the pictures and other junk in her bedroom. Everything changed, and she realized, more and more she was also changing. More and more, she was becoming more girly. Hell, last night she was hoping Tony would ask her out, and she wanted to get all fixed up and go to the formal. As she headed back to her bedroom, she continued to ponder everything that had happened to her. But thankfully, each time she took a sip of coffee it brought her back to her real self. She had to admit the coffee tasted better with the huge amount of cream and sugar she had added. But, still she was having to somewhat choke it down. Anyway, she headed to the bathroom to take a shower. Over an hour later she was in front of the mirror, putting in her earrings as she put on the final touches in her preparations for church. Then, she flinched and realized it had happened again. Marcy had taken control and moved her through the entire process of getting ready for church. 
Stepping back, she saw her hair was styled perfectly, she was wearing a really cute ivory castle yellow dress that came down to just above her knees, with open-toed two-inch sandals. And her face was made up to perfection. She was stunned again, how did she even know that color? Nevertheless, she turned to head back toward the closet, there was no way she was going out dressed like this. Then she jumped as someone knocked on her door. Maddie yelled, Marcy come on, dad's ready to go. Panicking, Marcy froze. What could she do? Uh, uh tell him I'll drive myself, she said anxiously. Nope, he said we're all riding together today. He's still a little pissed that you showed up late last week. Maddie replied. Come on, he said to drag you out of the room whether you're dressed or not. One. Two. Okay, okay, I'm coming, Marcy called as she hurried toward the door. As she did, someone on autopilot again she picked up her purse and made sure her makeup, keys and phone were in it. Then as she reached for the knob, the door flew open as she heard Maddie yell. I'm coming in, Maddie said as he opened the door. Marcy squealed when the door flew open and paled at seeing her much taller brother standing in the doorway. Good, you're dressed, now come on, Maddie said as he turned to go, but before he did he asked. Hey short stuff, you okay? Marcy paled at seeing Maddie face to face. Though they had passed on the stairs, he had run past her so fast she didn't get a chance to see the radical difference. And other than Jenny and Mama, she had not seen anyone else standing since her change. Now though, she was amazed and scared at seeing her younger brother so much taller than her. Timidly, she replied, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm okay. She softly replied. And as Maddie turned to go, she also became frustrated at her now high-pitched soft voice. Mark had a deep, baritone voice that demanded attention. She was unsure she could walk out the door at this point, when she jumped at Maddie's bark. Come on, shorty! Maddie yelled as he headed for the stairs. Still afraid, Marcy nervously moved out of her room. Once at the bottom of the stairs, she saw her family heading out the door. And she was dismayed to see how much bigger Daddy was. She had been as tall as him, but he had a good sixty pounds on Mark. Then walking up to Daddy's four-door F-250, she wasn't sure how she was going to get into the truck as she approached it. As she got up to the truck she looked up to the handle which was over her head. Maddie, help your sister. How many times have I told you to help your sister and mother into the truck? Matthew said to his son. Maybe one day that boy will learn, he thought. And before she knew what was happening, Maddie had opened the door and was boosting her up to the seat. She squeaked at being handled that way. She wanted to yell, but knew Maddie was just obeying Daddy just the same as she had his mark. It was when she heard Maddie reply, Yes, sir. At that she realized Maddie was behaving like she had his mark, just like Daddy had taught him. And she further realized she had taken to referring to her father as Daddy. It was a term that she'd heard her former girlfriend's use. And she paled at yet one more change for her. So now, not only was she physically a girl, but disturbingly, more and more she was acting like a frilly little girl. She was so caught up brooding over everything that had happened to her she was surprised when the truck turned, and she realized they had arrived at church. Everyone else was exiting the truck, but she was frozen in fear at the prospect being surrounded by everyone she had known as Mark. But, despite her fear, when Daddy called, she tentatively moved to slide out of the truck. And thankfully, Maddie was there to help her down. As she turned to head inside she heard a familiar voice. Good morning, Marcy, Jenny said as she walked up with a big smile on her face. Maddie turned to head inside. Hey short stuff, we need to get inside. Jenny giggled seeing Marcy being helped down from her father's truck, but also, at hearing her referred to that way. Once Maddie was far enough away, she moved over next to Marcy. Still giggling a bit, leaned down and asked. Short stuff? Almost beaming that she had to lean down to her girlfriend. Really that she had to lean down to anyone. That was still so cool. With a combination of nervousness and aggravation Marcy looked. Up to Jenny. Trying to get control of things, she squeaks, yeah, not to mention Shorty and Munchkin, Baby Girl and Pumpkin from Mama and Daddy. 
This needs to stop. You need to change me back. Now, frustrated she couldn't sound more imposing. And seeing her little girlfriend trying to growl was almost too funny to Jenny. She was trying to control her laughter. Honey, I'm not sure what I can do. I tried last night, and it didn't work. Besides, you look just darling today. I love that dress and your hair and makeup are perfect. Marcy blushed at Jenny's taunt slash compliments. This isn't fair, she grumbles. I don't want to be a girl. Wish me back to who I'm supposed to be. Then her concentration was broken by a deep male voice. Morning Marcy, morning Jenny, Charlie McCaskill said as he walked by. Looking up to see Charlie, Marcy blushed as she nervously replies. Hey, um, hi, Charlie, she coos sweetly. And seeing Marcy's reaction to Charlie walking by, Jenny smiles and shakes her head. Then again, teasing just a bit more she whispers. He's cute, isn't he? Blushing even more, Marcy replies, um, yeah, ah uh, yeah he's. Then she freezes and looks up to Jenny wide-eyed. Oh, my god. She squeaks and then freezes as people walking by look their way. And then before Marcy completely lost it, Jenny grabs the little girl by her arm and pulls her into church. All through church, Marcy contemplated everything that had happened to her. She realized that unless she really focused on the fact she was really Mark, she was totally acting like a high school girl. Looking down and seeing her exposed legs, from just above her knees, sticking out of her. Her. Dress was proof and feeling her feet swinging above the floor further confirmed how short she was now. She remembered getting ready for church, styling her hair and putting on makeup, picking out this really cute dress, wanting to wear higher heels but knowing mama and daddy wouldn't let her. The feelings she got when Charlie walked by was even worse. And as she thought about Charlie, she felt a rush as she peeked over at him, remembering his dimples, his tight firm butt, his. His. Oh God. And she gasped. Closing her eyes, she focused on being Mark. But, try as she may, she could barely remember her old life. Last night, she could remember most of the details of Mark's life, but now those memories were more like fuzzy recollections of many years ago. Thinking about Charlie, she had to battle the feelings she got, and she realized they were so much like the feelings she used to get when thinking about Jenny. Then she realized that it was even worse than that. She thought Charlie was about the most handsome man she knew. And she felt a heat building in her when she remembered seeing him smile at her. And she flushed with embarrassment at that memory. But also, like when she was entering the church, when the congregation was standing to sing, she felt so incredibly small when she thought about being Mark. Pretty much everyone loomed over her. She realized only the elementary and some of the middle school kids were her size or smaller. It was troubling to be looking up to pretty much everyone. And even more so when Jenny led her over to sit with the other kids from school. All through church, Jenny watched Marcy. She could see the now little girl was having a hard time dealing with all of this. But even more interesting, she could see there were times when Marcy seemed to lose herself in her new persona. She caught Marcy checking out the boys, whispering with Delaney and Jessica about a couple of college girls and their clothes. Then it was almost like suddenly she realized what she was doing and pulled back and was nervous as a rabbit. When church was over, Marcy ended up being persuaded into going out with the girls for lunch. And she found herself begging daddy to let her go and it was only after mama finally stepped in that she got to go. At which point she found herself surrounded by five girls gossiping about the coming school year, about guys, about clothes and she found herself getting more and more caught up in it all. Delaney pointed out some cute shoes and she had to agree. Becky Lynn talked about how cute Charlie is and she flushed with excitement as she agreed with her as well. Then she brought up how excited she was about her new heels and wearing them to school and all the girls ooed and awed over them when she showed them a picture of them on her phone. Then she saw Jenny grinning at her and she realized what she had been doing. Jenny could see more and more, Marcy was acting like the high school girly girl she appeared to be. She remembers she had a bit of that. She loved being a girly girl. She just didn't like being shorter than everyone else. She was regularly teased by her brothers and friends about being the shortest. And continuing to grin as she thought, well not anymore. 
she had enjoyed going to the mall with friends, checking out the boys, she also loved shoe shopping to get the highest heels she could find. Always desperate to gain any additional height. Again, she giggled as she knew that would no longer be an issue for her. When Jenny caught Marcy's eye with a devious smile and she could see the little girl realize what she had been doing. When Marcy finally got home from hanging out with her friends, her nerves were a wreck. After supper and spending more time as a girl, this time with her family talking about the new school year, she was finally able to say goodnight to Mama and Daddy. During the time with her new friends, she recognized the extreme swings from Marcy being in control to Mark running things. And she wasn't sure which was better, sure she wants to get back to her real life. But, apparently Jenny doesn't know how to change her back and that means she's stuck being a little girl. And if she's stuck, why fight it? Why should she even try, she wonders. But, she knows she wants her real life back and will fight as hard as she can to get it back. However, thinking about the how she had ooed and awed over the clothes the other girls had pulled out as they went from store to store scared her. She had never been so into clothes, but the dress Delaney tried on at Aeropostale was really cute. And the sandals Becky Lynn found at Forever 21 were so darling. But, then she shook it realizing what she was thinking. She had never even been in Aeropostale or Forever 21 or Charlotte Russe or the several other clothing or other girly stores she had been in today. And that didn't include when they went into Penny's or Macy's women's sections or went to the makeup sections and sampled the perfumes. She paled as she thought about how she had ooed and awed over all the clothes, makeup and jewelry she and the other girls had poured through. Nervously, she reached up to tuck her hair behind her ear and she felt her bracelet slide down her arm. And she realized the bracelets were the ones she had purchased today at the mall. Holding her arm out, she paled as she recalled how excited she had been at finding and purchasing these really cute pieces of jewelry. Then she shook her head realizing how easily she was slipping back into Marcy mode. And at that, she got real nervous recognizing how effortlessly Marcy was taking control of her. As she pondered all of this she again steeled her resolve to fight to maintain control and not give in to Marcy. Over an hour later she found herself sitting in her rocker holding another teddy bear wrapped up in her arms, her feet tucked up under her. She had climbed up here to consider all that happened. Fearfully, she realized she'd gotten lost again in Marcy's life. She had been planning what she would wear tomorrow for the first day of school. She had gotten lost in her excitement of being with her friends, seeing the really cute guys, thinking about cheer practice and the pep rally she would get to perform at as part of her debut of being part of the varsity squad. She shivered as again she realized she had been thinking about how cute Charlie and Tony were, hoping Tony would ask her out and then to the homecoming dance. Trying to redirect her thoughts, she figured she would take a bath to get ready for bed. So, she scooted forward and her feet still dangling off the floor much to her dismay, so she slid off. Once on her feet, she shook her head at how far she had to drop as she slid out of the chair. Just another reminder of how incredibly short she was now. One more time she looked around the room and recognized two things, first how utterly feminine her room was now, but also, how big everything was to her as compared to how it would have been as Mark. She recognized that everything that she would want easy access was on a low shelf. Focusing on her Mark perspectives, she felt so incredibly small in the room. Her bed, dresser, vanity, chair and shelves were so big to her now. Turning around and looking back at the big, white wicker rocker that she had been sitting in and realized it came up to her chest. Remembering Mama had a chair like this, she remembered Mark carrying it in when she and Maddie bought it for her for Mother's Day this year. Remembering it was really light, she reached out, grabbing the arms and pulled to pick it up. And she groaned at how heavy the rocker was to her now. Then with an oomph she dropped it back to the floor. And as aggravating as it was to be apparently so weak now, she also ended up shaking her hands at how soft her hands were. Looking down at them, she saw her hands red and marked from the wicker. God! Her hands were so soft now and she was so weak she could barely lift the light chair, not to mention how short her arms were. She had had to stretch out almost to her new limit to reach the outside edge of the chair. Anyway, not having any alternatives, she headed into the bathroom. Chapter 3 A New School Year Buzz Reaching Out Marcy shut off the alarm, remembering it was the first day of school. 
Excitedly, she climbed out of bed and threw on her robe to go get ready. Walking out of her bedroom, she was confronted by Maddie. Suddenly, she remembered all that had occurred over the weekend and she froze. Morning munchkin. Maddie grumbled as he shuffled by and into the bathroom. She started to back into her room when Mama came up the stairs. Good morning, sweetie. Are excited about your first day of school? Elizabeth asked. Marcy nervously turned to Mama and uneasily responded, Um, yes, yes ma'am. Elizabeth could see the anxious look on her little girl's face that had been there ever since she came back from the bonfire Saturday night. Everything okay, sweetie? Um, yes, yes ma'am, Marcy replied again, this time trying to be more convincing she smiled to Mama. I better get a move on if I'm gonna get out of here on time, she said as she headed for the stairs. Once, past Mama, her eyes went wide, she so did not want to go to school in the little girly body, but knew there was no way to get out of that. Nervously, she made her way to the kitchen and this time got a glass of juice. Thankfully, there wasn't anyone there this morning. Heading back upstairs and to her bedroom. Once back in her room, she closed the door and leaned on it as she fearfully considered what she would have to do. Hearing Maddie in the hall again, she knew she had no choice and headed for the bathroom. Slipping out the robe she again saw the really cute little girl she had become dressed in a rose pink nightie. It looked darling on her and was one of her favorite. An hour and twenty minutes later she was putting on her small diamond stud earrings and she realized that Marcy had again taken control and gotten her ready for school. Looked down she saw another set of gold hoop earrings on the dresser in front of her. Then looking to the mirror, she saw she was dressed in cute gold skater dress with prints of roses on it. It showed a bit of cleavage and spaghetti straps over her shoulders and hung only halfway to her knees. Looking further down she saw she was wearing what looked like three-inch heels. Well at least they gave her a bit of a boost in height she grimaced. As much as she hated to admit it, she was a really cute girl. But, again she did not want to be a girl. She turned to head to the closet to change when there was a knock on her door. Hey short stuff, it's about time to go, we're gonna be late if we don't get out the door in a few minutes, Maddie yelled from the hallway. Marcy froze at that, she knew she had to go, but everything in her didn't want to. Then she jumped when Maddie knocked again. Marcy, are you about ready? Maddie yelled. Still locked in place, unsure what to do, Marcy panicked as she called back. Um, give me a minute. Shaking as she knew nothing was gonna change in a minute that would make things any better. Fine, just hurry up, I don't wanna be late on the first day. Maddie yelled again, but thankfully, she could hear him walking away. Nervously, she made her way over the big wicker rocker and looked in her cute periwinkle blue backpack. Seeing her iPad, iPhone, and makeup bag, she sighed, resigned to the fact that she would have to go to school late to tiny girl she was now. Short stuff, let's go. She jumped when Maddie yelled, again. So, fearfully, she picked up her backpack and moved to the door. Reaching for the door, she closed her eyes and steeled herself for her first day at school as a girl. Anyway, she got downstairs and saw an aggravated Maddie waiting in the kitchen. About time! Maddie exclaimed as he rose and headed for the door. Once outside, Marcy moved over and climbed into the 2016 Sunflower Yellow Toyota Tacoma. She had slipped her backpack into the back seat of the cab. Maddie squeezed himself into the passenger seat on the other side, which made her smile for some reason. What's going on, Shorty? You've seemed off all weekend, Maddie asked. Marcy gave an uneasy glance to her much bigger brother. Um, uh, just nervous about school starting, she offered nervously. Still can't believe you talked Dad into buying you a Tacoma. It's really pretty nice, but you know how he is about foreign cars. Then she... Remembers Daddy talking about how horrible it was that they let those foreign cars in the States. Daddy was all about buying American when it came to cars and especially trucks. Then memories of her and Mama begging Daddy to buy this really cute Toyota Tacoma. Daddy finally conceded, saying it was a girl truck, so they wouldn't have to worry about it doing any real work. But also, he made sure to tell Maddie not to try getting such a useless car. 
he wasn't going to be going into woods to tow a toy truck out, since it would likely get stuck the first time it left pavement. She also remembers how proud she was when she took it over to show it to her friends. Well, it's a really cute truck and I. And she froze realizing Marcy had taken control again. You what? Maddie asked. Scrambling for a response, she realized the only way out of this would be to let Marcy take control. Then the answer occurred to her. I would have asked for a ranger, but they haven't made new ones for like seven years. Feeling a bit of relief that she had been able to avoid giving over control to Marcy. Thankfully, Maddie seemed to accept this and also didn't ask anything else. A few minutes later they pulled into the school parking lot, she fumed a bit that she was again relegated to the junior lot. She had looked forward to this little promotion for Mark as a senior. She recalled the numerous times she had been soaked in a rainstorm coming back from lunch or even getting in first thing in the morning. Finally, finding an open spot she pulled into park in the very back row. Looking in the rearview mirror and seeing the school and her classmates she steeled herself. As he began to climb out, Maddie glanced over to his little sister. You coming shorty? he asked. And one more time she knew she was trapped by the results of Jenny's wish. Again, she stammered to Maddie, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm coming, Dot. She nervously replied. She jumped a bit when Maddie slammed his door shut and then taking a deep breath, she opened her door and climbed out. Once she had her backpack, she reluctantly headed into school. As she moved through the parking lot, she was joined by Blake Jones and Haley Martin. Her new memories told her that they too were both first-year members of the varsity cheer squad. They were both excitedly chattering away about the new school year. Also, like with everyone else in this new world, they were taller than her. Haley is about five inches taller and Blake probably six inches. Eventually, she found herself joining into the conversation asking about what classes each of them had, and was so excited she had three classes with Blake and four with Haley. Two of them all three of them were in together. By the time they entered the building Marcy was totally in control. After fourth period, she was heading to the lunchroom and saw Jenny, and she realized she had gone through the entire morning under Marcy's control. She had been excitedly talking to Blake, Susie and Allison about how cute the new guy in their last class was. Marcus Billings had just moved to town from California and he is a real hottie. It was only when she saw Jenny that she realized what she had been doing. Gossiping like a girly girl, looing and eyeing over some guy. She stopped which caused Blake and Susie to stop and turn her way and questioning her paws. She saw Jenny grinning at her and she recognized she again had lost control to Marcy. But, before she could fully consider what she had been doing all morning, Blake grabbed her hand and pulled her to a table. Looking to where she was being dragged, she saw five or six girls already seated at the table, all talking excitedly over each other. And before she knew it, she joined in. Jenny watched Marcy and saw her go through a series of emotions. First as she came into the lunchroom with Blake, Susie and Allison in full girly mode. Then their eyes locked and Marcy came to the realization of how she had been acting. Then almost as quickly Blake had grabbed the little girl and drug her to the table the other group of junior girls was sitting at. And then she could see Marcy get lost in the cheerful banter all the other girls were participating in. She smiled as she watched her feminized little boyfriend turned girlfriend become a true girl and with a devious intent, she strolled by the table smiling as she watched Marcy so engrossed in the conversations the other girls were having. She even heard Marcy talking about how cute a new guy was. The school day finally ended, and Marcy came out of the control the little girl had over her. Thinking about her day she thought about her different classes and working to get around the school as she was now. Instead of the shop class Mark had been, kinda looking forward to, she had been placed in an home ec class. Which, thinking about it, had been pretty interesting. She found herself thinking excitedly about some of the projects Mrs. Newsom talked about for the coming year. And then her P class had her in with all the other cheerleaders. And they spent their time doing stretches and aerobic exercises, then different stunts and drills that were specific to cheerleading. She felt some exhilaration at how great it had been to be on the team. But also, she felt a bit troubled at how she was the smallest girl on the squad. Which, 
thinking about her day at school was very much the same. She was now the shortest kid in the entire school, and it affected even little things, no pun intended, like her locker. For the first time since she entered high school, she had a locker on the bottom row, which looking down to herself and also seeing how close the floor was really made sense. Especially since the bottom of the upper row of lockers were right at chest level to her, and shaking her head as she saw that the top of the upper row was way over her head now. She could remember Mark actually putting his hand on the wall at the top of the lockers. Again, shaking her head knowing she would need a ladder to reach up there now. But also, she realized that was just a minor change for her. Making her way from class to class was much more difficult now. The crowds of her classmates moving down the hallway talking animatedly as the move through the halls. No longer being able to see over almost everyone was incredibly frustrating. But also, much like the other girls in school, she found herself finding one girlfriend or another to gossip with as they moved through the crowed hallways. Now though as much as she wanted to go home and hide from the world, she had to go to cheer practice. And since again she was trapped in this world where she is a little girl who is a cheerleader, reluctantly that's what she did. So, after retrieving her practice gear from her truck, she headed back into the gym. And before she knew it she was back in the girls' locker room getting ready for, in reality, her first cheer practice. She was reminded of her time earlier in the day of being in the locker room with the girls. That time as well as now, she was surrounded by many of the most beautiful girls in various states of dress. As Mark she would have loved to be here, watching many of the hottest girls in school stripping out of their clothes as they prepped for practice. But, as she was now and as she had been earlier in PE class, none of the naked or nearly naked girls had any effect on her. Actually, that wasn't true, she found herself getting jealous of how firm and round Carla's tush is, or how big Delaney's boobs are, and of course how tall everyone on the team was. With Haley and Delaney being the closest to her in height at 5 feet 3 inches. She remembered dreaming of how cool it would be to be their height. Then she shook her head again, remembering how Mark had always thought of each of them as really short. Like she had thought of Jenny as really short. She still was having a hard time wrapping her mind around the fact that these girls she had been a foot taller than just a couple of days ago, now were nearly a half a foot taller than her. And that didn't include the girls like Christy or Jenny who were a foot taller than her. Before she knew she was swept up in the excitement of being with her friends and was on the field stretching and warming up. At one point she was stretching, basically folded in half in the back row, when she heard thundering footsteps coming up behind her. Then she heard whistling and cat calling as she realized the football team was running past the squad on the practice field. Jumping up and spinning she saw Tony and Charlie grinning and winking at her and the other girls as they ran by. She blushed furiously and at the same time she thrilled to see both of them looking at her. God, Tony is such a babe, she thought. Looking down, but peeking up to him, she slowly turned to see Delaney and Haley grinning at her. What? She asked blushing. And they just laughed as Coach Johnson called them back to practice. Returning to the warm-up exercises, she covertly kept sneaking glances at Tony until the squad moved on to practicing drills. And with that she got so immersed in the drills she totally forgot about Tony. When lining everyone up for the different cheers, she was assigned to the front row which was so cool. She would be out front for everyone to see when they cheered, and she smiled to herself at that. Then the guys all lined up practicing different stunt. She was able to do backflips with ease and Coach Johnson complimented her proficiency. As a matter of fact, Coach Johnson had her do several more so some of the others who were struggling could watch. Next, they moved to group stunts and she found herself being boosted up, balancing on one foot, in Christie's and Rachel's hands. She easily pointed his left foot straight up in the air, over her head as she shook her pom-poms. Then they boosted her a little further up and she floated high in the air for just a moment then dropped into their arms. All the girls cheered, offering their praise of a stunt well done. They did it again and this time she timed it a little better and got a little more altitude. And the next time she spun, doing a perfect pirouette as she dropped into her teammates' arms. She was exhilarated she was doing so well, proving she was indeed worthy of being on the varsity squad. 
Asterisk 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 over two hours later, practice was finally over, Marcy was glowing as she and the other girls gathered up their gear. She received numerous compliments from her friends and coach Johnson. She blushed as she received praises and was exhilarated that the others especially the seniors thought she was doing so well. Anyway, before she knew it she found herself back in the locker room and then in the showers with her teammates. Again, she found herself jealous of her teammates' assets, like their boobs and ass or, or their height. Even Christie's thick, long blonde hair. And even more, when they were at the counter, with her and the others blow-drying and styling their hair and fixing their makeup. The whole time, she enjoyed being with her friends, talking about going to the mall, or what some of the other girls had been wearing, or who was dating who, and even how cute that new guy at school was. Then back in the lock room, she began dressing and continued talking with her friends. As she was heading out, Rachel asked for a ride home, then Delaney did as well. This was so cool since Rachel and Delaney were seniors. Heading toward Rachel's first she was nervously excited as they talked. Her excitement grew when they both complimented her truck, they both loved her pink camo seat covers. After dropping off Rachel and almost to Delaney's house, Delaney said, You know I think your truck is even cooler than Jenny's. I mean I just love these pink seat covers. At the mention of Jenny's name she came back to herself and she swerved a bit, causing Delaney to scream. What the hell did you do that for? Delaney shrilled. Marcy paled as she realized what had happened. She had come back out of the little cheerleader's control. Thankfully, she had not wrecked the truck. Sorry? She squeaked as she slowed and refocused on her driving. After dropping Delaney off, she finally was able to go home. During the ride home, she paled as she remembered everything she had done today. Gossiping with her girlfriends, touching up her makeup in the bathroom, shaking her butt and pom-poms during practice. However, before she could come to terms with all she had done, the way she had arrived home. Pulling her backpack and gym bag out of the truck, she headed into the house, hoping she could escape to her bedroom without any questions. Unfortunately, she wasn't allowed to escape to the privacy of her room. As she walked into the house mama called to her. Hey honey, how was your day? Elizabeth called to her daughter. Grimacing, Marcy knew she was going to have to spend time telling mama about her first day at school. There was certainly one consistency from her old world to this. And it was that mama wanted to know about her children's lives. As Mark, she remembered numerous times trying to get out of talking to her mother about whatever she, um he, had been doing on a given day. Her memories told her that in this new world, this had become an annual ritual. Since kindergarten, she had spent the afternoon of the first day of school talking about everything that had gone on at school with Mama. Which, strangely warmed her heart at the memories of the mother-daughter talks they had shared. And as much as she wanted to escape to her room, events again conspired against her. So, she turned and headed to the kitchen and found Mama sitting at the bar with two glasses of sweet tea sitting in front of her. With a resigned sigh, she weakly smiled as she dropped her bags on the table and moved to the stool next to Mama. Which was just a bit of a struggle to get up onto, finally though she got up on the tall stool. Elizabeth had looked forward to her annual talk with her daughter. She had loved this day, she was able to get her little girl to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk. With Marcy starting 11th grade she wasn't sure how much longer they would be able to continue their talks. Add to that Marcy seemed like something was bothering her since she came home Saturday night. As her little girl came in she could still see some hesitancy in her. So, Marcy how was your first day of school? Figuring if she started with some simple questions, that would be the best way to draw her out. Finally, on the stool, Marcy turned to Mama smiling weakly. Then she turned and grabbed the glass of tea and took a sip. She paused, not wanting to be here, but knowing events were again conspiring against her. So, she took another sip of the sweet tea and set the glass down. Seeing Marcy's tentative smile, Elizabeth decided to start in a safe area. So, tell me about your first day. Did you get the class you wanted? Are any of your friends in your classes? What about practice? How did that go today? 
Asterisk, 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 nearly two hours later, Marcy finally made it to her bedroom. She had recounted her day to Mama, telling her all about her classes, her cheer practice, which friends were in her classes. And as she thought about it, she realized she loved the time spent talking about her day with Mama. Throwing her backpack on the bed, she moved into the bathroom to do some business. Once done, she headed up to her bedroom and caught sight of herself in the mirror. And she stopped and turned looked at herself. Again, seeing her long, wavy chestnut hair, then stepping back and looking at her entire body. Seeing herself she fought the growing control of Marcy, wanting to check out really see herself from Mark's perspective. So, pushing back against the constant control of the little girl, she felt a little better. Slipping out of the dress she had worn to school, she turned back to the mirror. Holding the dress back up as she posed in front of the mirror and thinking about how cute it was and how cute she had looked in it. She couldn't believe she was thinking that way. It was the first time since she had become Marcy that she was thinking in any way positive about her present situation. Thinking about her day, she had mixed emotions. First, she was aggravated that she was a really small girl, she had a hard time making it through the hallway between each class. She had to sit on the front row in every class, so she could see the marker board at the front of the class. She was only hanging out with girls all through the day instead of her buddies like she used to. She was a junior again instead of being a senior like she should have been. And that didn't include the loss of her knowledge of football, basketball, and hunting. All of that seemed to have been replaced with knowledge of cheerleading, fashion, and other girly things. However, she realized she had enjoyed spending time with her new girlfriends today. She realized how much she loved it when she caught Tony and Charlie checking her out. Man, they are major babes she thought, even though she knew she shouldn't be thinking that way. How exciting it was to be a member of the varsity cheer squad. She thought about how much she loved talking and gossiping about everything with her friends yesterday and today. Looking back to the mirror and looking at the girl she had become, she thought it could have been worse. She was cute, she appeared to have a lot of friends, she had really cute clothes and a cool, almost new truck. Looking around her room she loved how it looked. The really cute furniture, the color of the walls, her bed, the cute little stuffed teddy bear, all of it was so cute. Turning back to the mirror and looking at what she had become and realizing there was probably no way to switch back to Mark. Also, she thought there were some definite positives being the short cute girl she had become. Not to mention she really enjoyed her memories of her mother-daughter talks and she enjoyed her talk with Mama just now. So, she let go of the idea of going back to being Mark and threw herself totally into being Marcy. And she realized from now on see life the way Jenny had. 